Now I have to ask you, why do 30% of executive management feel that HR doesn't play a sufficient role in business? Why do you think? So, look, over the years, in fact, it, it, there are some numbers that are even more stark than that, mm -hmm. if, depending on which survey you go to. Wow. Um, I think over the years, the HR function has struggled because of this issue about being able to prove the value mm -hmm. add of policies and processes. I think it's also struggled because there's been a, a, a distinct lack of understanding of the industry and the, and the company they're working for. There's a kind of a... a the HR department. Yeah. In, in a lot of organizations you come across, they're kind of somehow separated from the business and they're not, they're not they're really... They're like their own little, little yeah. cluster. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more that they, they just haven't demonstrated that level yeah. of industry acumen that is enabling them to draw that connectivity between what they're doing and the needs of the business. So where we start from is what are the business needs? We want better branch profitability, we want better customer satisfaction, we've got to, you know, we have to comply to the new regulations. To make that much more effective from an HR perspective is you need to be able to translate into what the people issues are and therefore develop a people agenda that can address them directly as opposed to taking best practice and applying yeah. best practice which I think again, you know, I'm an HR guy myself so I feel qualified to say these things but you know it, it, I think that's been the trend we take best yeah. practice and apply it it may not necessarily be the right thing for your organization and that's where I think evidence-based HR again can come in because you mm -hmm. can apply the things most directly to your needs can, can I give you one more example of course of, we it, love examples it, well learning and development you know mm -hmm. organizations spend a fortune on training I mean sometimes they don't know how much they're spending they know what their HR budget is but actually, they're not the only ones spending money on, on training. So yeah. the finance department will, the marketing department will. So once you get a handle on how much you're spending, really understanding where, that's, where the best value out of that spend is coming from is something mm -hmm. we've really struggled to do. I mean, there are examples of organizations that are spending you know, hundreds of millions of pounds on talent, and they will openly say they're not sure where they're getting best value for that spend. Wow. Now, if you, if you can start linking that into the business benefit, and, and this is where the HR acumen comes in, mm -hmm. then uh, the industry acumen comes in, you can start redirecting that money to where you're going to get most value. Now, that's got to be the right thing well, to do for any organisation. Well, it just makes sense when you mm. say it. Yeah. <laughs> now, what, in your opinion, what areas are HR departments currently missing the mark on, be besides what we've just spoken about? Part of that, yeah. So, so you know, if you again, I bring you back to one of the business issues. Right yeah. down here, you've got talent skills issues, mm -hmm. skill shortages. I've been talking to a, a client about talent retention, you know, keeping people within the organisation, uh, how they should incentivise their people, what the best reward packages mm -hmm. for them. So if you're if you're starting to think about them as as, as people issues related to deli delivering what you need to deliver, mm -hmm. then you can start focusing your activity around that and focusing your analysis around those areas. So uh, in the report, you, you, you've seen that um, mm -hmm. McGraw-Hill have really uh, nailed the profile of the people most likely to leave. I don't know if you saw that in there, but so they've got a real- Talk us through that profile. So, so well, no, I can't go into detail, but <laughs> they, 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 they now know because they have, they, have, you know, they, they have an issue with some attrition issues, but they, they know the profile of the people most likely to leave. And so now, as they know that, so things like, you know, how long have they been in a current job? How much training have they had? When was the last time they got a pay increase? Those sorts right. of issues. They now know when that's li likely to happen, and so they can adjust their uh, processes and policies to, to, to deal with those issues before it becomes a problem, i.e. the person resigns. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. Again, it's forward-thinking, predictive, evidence-based HR.